All right. What we're here to talk about today, we got a perfection kerosene heater. We're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, care and maintenance, and I'm going to show you how to replace a wick in one. This is one of perfection. This is a perfection model 1701. It's uh, one of their Art Deco sort of style heaters from the uh, mid 1930s. They were available in various finishes and stuff. This happens to be a uh, porcelain enamel finish, similar to a cook stove. It's a hard finish, it will not rust, chips off a little bit. This is one of the original catalogs from the 30s showing the heaters. They had different grades. Of course, the ones with the enamel finish were higher end models. There's your model 1701 right there. Okay. These heaters are very easy to use, very easy to maintain. They don't offer any safety features. If you kick it over, it's going to set your house on fire. But if you use it right, let it sit up there and burn, it's a very excellent source of heat. Good way to heat cold corners, heat a garage or a barn, chilly room in your home, or use it when the power's out. This is the tank. It's easily removed from the heater by lifting this open and pulling the tank out. Today we're going to talk to you and show you how to replace the wick. Now this, this is your flame spreader here. In order to remove your flame spreader, you just lift, give it a slight turn, twist, and it comes right off. Now these notches right here in the flame spreader are designed, what they do is they stop the wick from raising, but so far, you only have about a quarter inch of your wick showing on this outside edge, and that's what it actually burns, okay? When you remove your flame spreader, I like to use a pocket knife or something. You wanna scrape the char and stuff because it will build up on this edge of this flame spreader. You wanna scrape that off, keep that area clean, Keep all these holes in your flame spreader. You want to keep all those clean. Because this is how the heater gets its air. Okay? If any of these holes stop up, if this if this flame spreader starts stopping up, then your heater, heater will start smoking. Alright? So we're removing the flame spreader. This component here is called your gallery. Okay? If your heater's been sitting dormant for a long time, this can be stuck. If it's stuck, you can spray a little penetrating oil around it or something. And then usually they'll come right off, but it threads off in a counterclockwise fashion. You just unscrew it and lift it off. Okay? I usually like to put a little light coat of something like axle grease, uh, petroleum jelly, or something in my threads here, and that keeps those from sticking and makes it easier to remove and repl uh, remove for changing the wick and servicing. You need to keep the holes and things in your gallery clean. Uh, Cobwebs, dust, and dirt and stuff can accumulate on these, so you want to brush these off periodically and keep them clean. Also, keep this area down in here clean. All right. In order to remove your wick, this is your wick. The wick is good until the wick burns down to the wick carrier. The wick carrier is this metal sleeve that the wick is on. Okay. Once the wick burns all the way down to that carrier, the wick is no longer good. It must be replaced. So we turn the wick up until the mechanism in here, the gears, come to the end of the wick carrier. Once you get it up that far, you can grab the wick with two fingers and lift it and pull it right out. Okay? Just tuck the tails up in the wick and discard. Alright? Now that we got our wick removed, we're going to look down in here you'll see a tab on each side of your wick tube down in the tank. If you could see on down in there, you would see it's got some feet, sort of like feet down there. What those are for is to guide your wick down in the bottom of the tank. Okay, those are very important. We'll talk about those more momentarily. If you're newer today, we're going to use a uh, original old stock perfection wick. Got a cardboard tube in it, just pull that out and discard, okay? When you get your wick out of your uh, box, pull your tails out. Just like so. All right, and we're gonna line those up. Those uh, two guides in there that we were talking about before, we wanna line those up with our tails of our wick. 
Now some of your modern replacement wicks can be split four ways. Okay, they may have four legs. That's fine, it's a good quality wick. Perfection wicks, or the wicks that you're supposed to use in these heaters are composed of cotton. Okay, some of your cheap wicks like Pick a Wick or, or uh, uh, Carol World or some of those others may have a loose fitting sock down here. It's just stringy and loose, not a solid, uh, not a solid foot like this. If you have one of those, it will only be split on one side. You're going to need to go to the opposite side and split it on the opposite side to make it go down into the bottom of your tank to absorb the fuel. If the wick doesn't go down into the bottom of the tank, your heater will burn out of fuel before it is actually empty. And if this occurs and you have a cotton wick, each time the wick is allowed to burn dry, a quarter inch of that wick will be consumed and your wick life will be reduced. Okay, now we're going to line this wick up. We're going to tuck our, tuck our tails down. Now this is lined up with, with our guides on, on each end where our tails are. We're going to line that up and we're going to work it down. Once we get it down over, okay, then we're going to have to talk about over here is where your wick adjuster. You're going to have to fish the wick down behind the adjuster. Make sure that the split in the wick is in line with the gears on your adjuster. Then slide the wick down until your adjuster makes contact with your wick carrier. Okay, once you get it down, you may have to persuade it a little bit. Work it down. Okay, now our gears are meshed. Then we can turn the wick on down. And those feet will guide that wick down to the bottom of the tank. Once we get our wick in place, it's time to reinstall the gallery. We're going to thread our gallery on. Once your gallery is on, turn your wick up and look at the edge along the top where you see an unevenness okay you've got to get rid of that your wick has to be level I use a little bit of lighter fluid just go right around the wick just a just a slight bit of lighter fluid once you do that you ignite it okay and what that'll do, because this is a cotton wick, that'll burn. When it burns, it'll burn down and it'll leave you with nothing but ash. You just let it burn until it starts to go out. And then set your flame spreader back up there to go ahead and extinguish it. Okay? You don't want to do this when you got fuel in your tank. Because your wick's going to pick up the fuel and it's not going to burn out. But it'll burn out relatively rapidly. And uh, we're going to let this burn, let it burn out, and then we'll return. Alright, now we've burned our wick off. We have a good level burning surface here you can see. Okay, we've got a little, little flake sitting there, but it won't hurt nothing. But after you put a little bit of lighter fluid on it and you burn it off, like I said, your tank needs to be empty because you don't want it to pull kerosene up and absorb the kerosene and continue burning. You want the wick to burn away until you get a level burning surface just like this right here. Once you get that, you're ready to put your flame spreader back. Take your flame spreader, just drop it in place, and you're good to go. When you raise the wick up, it should raise up roughly a quarter inch and stop, okay? Once you've got that, you're good, okay? Then you're ready to put fuel in your tank. Once you put fuel in your tank, allow that wick about 15 minutes soaking time to allow it to draw the kerosene up before you light it. And when you're using a cotton wick, again, I'm going to stress, try not to burn your heater dry of fuel. Because each time you burn the heater dry of fuel, it will consume a portion of your wick. Alright, so we're ready to go there. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, other wicks. 
This is a genuine perfection 700X wick. This is the only wick perfection ever made that is composed of fiberglass. This wick, as you can see, this is a 700X, has a fiberglass top, but it still has the cotton bottom. Cotton is more absorbent and it pulls the kerosene up quicker, but the fiberglass will not burn away. Some of your wicks that you find in hardware stores today, such as the Pick a Wick or Carol World or something like that, will have a loose fitting sock down here, uh, real strandy, loose cotton sock. Like I said, you'll have to split it on the other side if you're using it. But if it's fiberglass on the top, it will not work in your heater because it's loosely made at the top. Those little strands of fiberglass will actually poke out around your flame spreader and your heater will smoke. This being a genuine perfection wick, it is designed to be used in the perfection heaters and it works very well. And the fiberglass will give you a very long life, but you have to burn the heater dry periodically to clean the wick. If you have a fiberglass wick, you can do that. Burn the heater dry and it will clean the wick. But if it's a cotton wick, don't burn the heater dry. So that's just kind of a basic, basic on the, on the difference in some of the wicks. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now, when you're, when you're using your heater and the heater's been in use, periodically, you're gonna wanna pop your flame spreader off, like I said, and clean the, clean the edge of it here that the wick rides on. Make sure your holes are clean. Clean all the soot and stuff away from all your holes because this is what provides oxygen to your flame and keeps the heater burning clean. So you wanna keep those clean. Keep your gallery clean. But you can also turn the wick up just till it hits its edge and you can take the edge of a knife and just scrape it right around that wick just like that all the way around and knock off the old ash and the old charred wick as the wick ages and burns away. You can do that. Once you're done with that, you're ready to install your tank back in your heater. Just simply open the lid. your tank in place and you're ready to go and it should light right up that's your wick bring it around close your heater now we can see right through this window we've got a perfect flame once you light your wick the flame will encircle the wick and it'll get larger as it heats up. These heaters produce roughly about 10,000 BTUs of heat. That's what they're rated at. They're rated at 10,000 BTUs of heat. In all honesty, I believe they put out a little more than that. Usual burn time on a tank of fuel is between eight and 10 hours, but you want to check it periodically. Make sure you keep fuel in your heater, especially if you're using a cotton wick. If you're using a cotton wick and you burn your heater dry, it's going to burn your wick away. You're not going to get long life out of your wick. If you maintain your heater right, keep fuel in it, don't burn it dry, a wick can actually last for years. All right, now that we're finished with our heater, you can see we got a perfect flame. We're burning nice and clean. We have no smoke coming out of it. This heater is ready to heat this winter. Now, if you have any questions about one of these heaters, want to discuss anything, any problems, feel free to contact me and let me know. I'll be glad to help.